Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bassin TV. So this is gonna be another one of my backyard breakdowns. But as you can see, I don't have any lures in my hand. I don't have any products to review. I don't have anything to talk about other than a particular approach to fishing. One of the, the things that I'm asked about the most is how do I find fish? You know, where do I start? And I think that the answer to that question lies more in how do I stay on the fish uh, as much as it does where do I find the fish? Now, there is a, an approach to finding fish, and we'll talk about that later. And in fact, when we do that video, I'll link it in the description below. So if you watch this a year from now, once we've got that finding fish video up, then this will link to it. But until then, here, here's the deal. They, there's a rule out there that people say 90% of the fishermen, or I'm sorry, 90% of the fish are caught by 10% of the fishermen, or 10% of the fishermen catch 90% of the fish. And I think that number's skewed. I think what you really are looking at is 90% of the fishermen who apply themselves catch fish 90% of the time. But then there's about 10% of the population that are recreational enthusiasts that get out there and really just swing for the fence every time they go fishing. There's no preparation. And so they're relying uh, mostly on luck. One of the things that I think is the most beneficial to you in trying to break through to that next level as an angler, whether you consider yourself a beginner, intermediate, advanced, whatever level that you're at, is to fish when you're not comfortable. And what I mean by that is if it's colder than you normally fish, go fishing. Spend some time finding fish in those conditions. Um, if it's hotter than normal, go fish. Uh, keep notes, keep logs, keep a, a record, whether it's just a note in your phone or you actually commit it to pen and paper or you save it as a, a spreadsheet or a Word document so you can review back on it later and name it, categorize it. Fishing hot, fishing cold, tough con conditions, approaching front. Um, and, and write down those lessons that you learn so you don't have to learn them over and over again. So here's the point of this video in particular. It's uh, early December right now. We've got super cold overnight lows. And as you can see right now, it's nice and comfortable outside. So I force myself to get up and go fishing uh, in the mornings. And I may catch one or two or three fish. But what I've done is locate where the fish are. And so most guys are adept at catching fish in shallow water. Uh, the question they have that may might as well be, you know, the cure to cancer is where do they go when they're not shallow? And so a lot of folks are just looking for the fish to turn back on. And what it is is the fish are feeding aggressively somewhere, just not where you're fishing. So here's my tip or, or technique or tactic, if you will, for being able to find fish in any conditions. And that is to fish in different conditions. So when you go out, and you fish tough conditions and you find one fish, mark that fish. And then go back and look at that fish on a map relative to where you were catching fish and then try to figure out between where you caught the fish and where you are now what their travel corridor is. And so when the conditions are transitional conditions between when you were catching fish and the fish that you caught, you know that they're somewhere between those two points or that they're in that one extreme, whether they're super deep water, offshore points, offshore humps, uh, relating to brush piles or whatever it is. So my tip, my tactic or technique for this particular video is to challenge you to fish when it's tough. And that's when you're gonna have the breakthroughs. Uh, nobody's breaking through or having revelations about fishing when they're just annihilating a topwater. Uh, nobody's having a revelation when every cast, they're just gobbling up a spinnerbait. But when you get out there and you have to grind it out and you have that one little clue that they tell you where they are, Go back and look at that in the context of the big, bigger picture. Where were you catching them two weeks ago? Where were you catching them a week ago? Uh, if you catch them there and then you catch them somewhere else a week later, look at that, that trail. Put the clues together to have a bigger picture, you know, a more uh, in-depth understanding of what the fish do in certain conditions. And here's the reason why. If you have a front come through and the fish orient to a particular area, and then a front has gone, they're probably gonna go back to the other area. So be the first fisherman to start catching fish in that area by ambushing them in the middle. If there's a funnel, if there's a hump, if there's a ditch, they're gonna travel that structural uh, highway to get to where they're going. And it's important to understand the difference between cover and structure, and a lot of people use it interchangeably. Structure is something that's permanent. It's rocks, it's the bottom, it's the contours, it's drop-offs, it's whatever. Brush and cover are something that's not necessarily permanent. A tree actually falls under the criteria of cover and structure to a certain extent because it's semi-permanent for the trunk, but the branches may change. So structure is something that's permanent that's going to, over time, dry fish to a particular area. So take your Navionics app, 
Take a screenshot. Mark where you caught the fish. Uh, use a, a, a the old-fashioned way. Use a, a fold-out waterproof map and mark the spots. To what'll happen is you'll start to see patterns and write little notes to yourself to tell yourself when you caught them in those conditions, how you caught them, why you caught them. See if it relates to the so lunar times at that particular time. If it's ahead of the feeding time because the front's coming. If it's after the feeding time because the front just passed. All of those things are going to be clues to help you help you catch more fish and you won't be as dependent on folks who already know what they're do know what they're doing and this is part of the fun. At least it's part of the fun for me. So again, this is a tip, a tactic, a technique, but it's also a challenge for you to get out there and fish outside of your comfort zone and fish somewhere you may not fish so that you can learn something about where the fish go when you're not catching them. I'm Chad Hoover. This is my backyard breakdown. I hope it was helpful. If you've got some specific questions, post them in the comments below. I'll do the best I can to answer every question. And as always, please subscribe. Please comment, please like the video so we can keep bringing you these awesome tips, tactics, and techniques. And stay tuned for some more good stuff from Kayak Bassin TV.